Houston, the most ethnically diverse city in America. We eat now how the rest of the country will be eating in 30 years. With more than 10,000 restaurants and cuisines from over 70 countries in American regions, this is a good place to be a foodie. And like me, a lover of international flavors. From my culinary studies overseas to family dinners in Nicaragua, I've realized there's something special about sharing a recipe. You share your culture. You share your story. So I'm going on a journey, meeting and cooking with some of the people that call Houston home. I'm Chef David Cordua. Let's build the Houston cookbook. We're on our way to meet a dear friend, Kiran Verma, a master of Indian cuisine in the Gandhi district. Indian, Pakistani, and Middle Eastern restaurants fill the strip centers around Hillcroft and Harwin. Markets here import specialty ingredients and spices that you can't find anywhere else. We can get everything we need right here to make an authentic Indian dish. Hey, Chef. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. Great to see you. Great to see you. Ready for some yeah, where spice are we? shopping today? Absolutely. This is awesome. I'm going to grab a basket. So I'm going to take you to this aisle, and this will have all of the spices we are going to use to cook chicken tikka masala today. Beautiful. I can't wait to learn. So do you see this coriander? It's going to be more flavorful when it's whole, and we'll roast it and grind it when we go. Whole chilies. These are the cumin seeds, cinnamon sticks, cardamoms. Is using ingredients that have been around a long time, ingredients from this neighborhood, from the store, part of what makes your cuisine authentic? You know, you can replace some of the things like from American grocery stores, but that would be only if you can't get from these stores. Right. So I would not use any of those. What comes from India has a totally different flavor and the color to it than the ones you get in regular American stores. So it's worth a visit. It's worth, worth a a visit. trip. Yeah, it's worth the trip. We've got our ingredients. So now we're off to Kiran's restaurant. This is a Houston institution for Indian fine dining. David, you want to start toasting the spices? Absolutely. While the tomatoes are being roasted? This is? This is cumin. cumin. This is coriander seeds, peppercorns, cloves, star anise. It's a black cardamom. And the reason you are toasting, you know, because so the, the spices will release its oils. They come alive. Now you have mace, bark, cinnamon, and my most favorite, bay leaves. Look at the size of these bay leaves. Yeah. So tell us the story behind tikka masala. What is, what's the history? I know it crosses many different countries. It does. And for me, and I think a lot of people, it's their first introduction to Indian cuisine. This actually came from Mughal times in India. What it is, because it, if you see, this involves a lot of spices to make chicken for about six to eight people. But this became a very restaurant popular dish because it was a luxury item. In the blender? Yes. So basically, this is a freshly ground garam masala. This you can empty out. Okay. Because we're gonna use this. Now you're gonna blend the tomatoes in the same blender. So now go ahead and pour this sauce. All these blended tomatoes. You got that sweet char. We'll use half of this spices okay. in the sauce and half in the marinade. Oh, beautiful. So now we are gonna put some salt. So one step, which I haven't told you the secret, we are gonna chop half a pound of butter into small cubes and drop it in there. This is a lot of work, but trust me, it's worth it. The key to making a great Indian dish is complexity and layering of flavor. All right, so talk to me about marinade. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a mixture of salt and pepper, just to season this. We always put turmeric. Turmeric, of course it's for flavor, but also it's for uh, health benefits. Now I have freshly squeezed lemon juice, 
And then you have ginger and garlic paste. I've already mixed both of them in here. Okay. I use mustard oil. Mustard oil is very clear. It almost looks like clarified butter to you. Yeah. So now I'm going to put a little bit of paprika, a little bit of chili powder, and a little bit of cayenne powder. This is going in the yogurt. In the yogurt? It tenderizes. It tenderizes. I'm sure it protects the meat from drying out as well. It does. It degree. adds it like a moisture. We are going to keep it for about six to eight hours. We are going to grill this, but we grill it in our tandoor. Yes. At home, of course, we'll uh, cook it on the grill, or you can do it in the, in oven. the oven. Yeah, you can uh, bake it, broil it. So we're going to strain the tomato sauce. Yeah. Press out all the goodness. You can add cream to it at this time, so it will keep cooking. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and add clarified butter, onion, garlic. Let me guess, ginger? Ginger. <laughs> oh God, that smells so good. Are you ready for chicken? Yeah. Yeah. These are all the three paprika, chili powder. And cayenne. And cayenne we added. I love the taste of all the three peppers, yellow, red, and green. So go ahead and now Wait add sauce. your uh, sauce to okay. it. This is my korma sauce already ready. Cashews yeah. and almond that have been soaked. In the water. To soften them up. Uh huh. And then and you are. Yeah. And we blend them with heavy cream. I gotta get in there. Mm. Good. Glad you like it. Ah, it's delicious. Cheers to Houston and our culinary skills. And our friendship. Thank you. And our friendship. Thank you. Traditionally, chicken tikka masala is served with rice and non bread. Now for a taste of Mexico. This close to the border, about a fourth of Houstonians speak Spanish. Ese es chile habanero. Tex-Mex cooking is a big part of our culture, but authentic interior Mexican cuisine is a bit harder to find. In Montrose, there's a little place called Cuchara. It's a Mexico City-inspired bistro. And after years of loving her food, I'm excited to finally meet the owner, Ana Bedwin. Ana? Yes? ¿Qué tal, David? Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Welcome. What a beautiful place. Thank you. Welcome. I'm happy Thank you're you. here. Is this where we're going to be? This is where we're going to be. Hola. Hola. ¿Qué tal, David? Alejandra. Mucho gusto. Igualmente. This is beautiful. Look at all this gorgeous barro. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, this looks like mole verde, right? That's what we're going to prepare, mole verde. Very simple recipe, easy to make at home. I love it. I love it. What do we have? Well, we're going to have the boiled tomatillos. Uh, the serrano peppers. We have pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, cilantro, hoja santa, garlic, and onion. Hoja santa. Now, t tell us about hoja santa. Hoja santa is from Oaxaca. It was really hard for us to find it in Houston, so we decided to grow it. And that's probably the secret of this it's mole. It's a huge leaf. Try it. It's very perfumey. It's Same kind of floral. family as basil. It looks, but like, it looks like more giant floral. basil. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It adds a lot of flavor to the mole. What, what's so important about the clay? The clay is believed to infuse flavor into your dishes. And purists, like my grandma or like our cooks at the restaurant, do have different clay for different vegetables. You're never supposed to mix them. Because the they probably absorbs. take in some of the flavor. Yeah, Correct. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fry the seeds first, because that's the process that takes a little longer. We use olive oil. And mole verde is from where? From what region? Mole verde is from Oaxaca. And in Mexico City, we also have a version of it, usually without the hoja santa. My grandmother learned it from her sister's mother-in-law, who was a Zapotec woman. And she basically taught my grandma and her sisters to cook. So this is a family recipe. I love it this. is. We're getting some deep secrets. It is. It is so a family we've, recipe. We fried the pepitas and the sesame. What comes in next? We're going to do garlic and we're going to do onion. Just the All our beautiful aromatics. Course. I know. I want to smell like this all day. <laughs> I'll just carry it with me. Now, since you've been doing this recipe in Houston, has it, has it evolved at all from the family recipe, or has it still stayed, stayed it the same? It has stayed totally true to the recipe. 
My grandmother came to Cuchara's opening six years ago, and she is really mean, and she attests <laughs> to the authenticity of her recipes. She's... You know you'd get an honest answer. Yeah, <laughs> more than honest, more than honest. All right, that has some beautiful golden color. Are we there? It's ready. Next step. Let's to the take blender? it to the blender, yes. So we are going to blend. How many tomatillos? Let's do a few. Let's do maybe three, three. or four. Look at this little guy. There we go. A little bit water. of water, yes. Yep. Then uh, why don't you add the serranos? Three. It's up to you. Up to taste. It's up to you. Let's see how spicy right. it turns. Let's do, let's do two. OK. <laughs> Just to be safe. And a little bit of the water as well. A little bit of the water. And then let's add a pinch of salt just to start. So, hoja santa, your favorite, new favorite, cilantro. Let's fry it. And it has to simmer. We have to let it be there for a good five, ten minutes. Okay. Don't move it, just... Let it understand that he that it has to be perfect. Oh, gonna, this looks amazing. We're gonna plate it for you on top of an hoja santa, and we have some tortillas for you. Bring a spoon and let's okay. go sit over there so you can try it. So, get yeah. your tortilla, dip in your mole. We put some refried beans on the side just in case you find it too spicy. But I think you did really good on the proportions of the pepper. Mm. Mm. Good touch. I really eat this good. every day. Do you approve of these mm. measurements? I guess so. You did really good. Un poquito de lo que México nos está transportando hasta este país. That's what the city of Houston does best. I think this city is such a welcoming place for for new ideas and new cultures. No one cares who your parents were, or where you came from. If you come with with talent, with a good idea, this is one of the most welcoming places, and you're definitely bringing all of that. Thank, so thank you. you. Houston has one of the largest Vietnamese populations in the U.S. In parts of what we call Asia Town, near Sam Houston Tollway and Bellard Boulevard, even the street signs are in Vietnamese. One of the most popular Vietnamese dishes in Houston is pho. It's a noodle soup with a silky broth that may soon rival tacos and barbecue as the national dish of Houston. I've so been looking forward to learning how to make it. So we're going to Pho One, a small restaurant run by the Vu family in the Energy Corridor. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hey, I'm Till. Nice Damn. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. This is my mom. I'm Kim Vu. Kim Vu. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah, excited to uh, see how you make your pho. Please uh, follow us and uh, we'll show you what awesome. we got. Hi. All right, well, I'm going to let you uh, do most of the work here. So we have already a pot here ready with uh, five gallons of water already boiled. Okay. What, okay. what do we have here? So we have some so, uh, brisket, the, it looks like? Briskets. We got some uh, shank the, uh, and bones. Brisket fat and a brisket fat too. Yeah. So we want to keep some fat to have like that flavor that goes in the broth. We're gonna go the ginger first. Okay. Ginger, ginger and salt. salt. Yeah, the salt. So now we just add the bones. And these are the shanks you said. Yeah. Should we go with the brisket? You you can wet for the, the, the Okay. Uh, we're we're gonna wait for the boil. boiling and we add the, uh, the brisket to it. The water is boiling, so it's ready to go. We can start me putting the rest of the meat. And so we're going to let this rock for how long? Combien de temps? Uh, put that in the meat. In the after meat? Half an hour. So these are all the impurities coming out from the, the bones that we're going to skim off at the top. So we're going to add the uh, star anise. Okay. It's about a cup of sugar and a cup of fish sauce. So now as we uh, we wait, the, the same process of taking all the residue, we're gonna, we're gonna do like multiple times. Alrighty, so now we're just gonna put everything on the bowl. We have the noodles ready. And uh, so that's the meat that you just slice, the uh, brisket, some brisket fat, shank, the tendon, tendon. freshly cut out of the bones that you guys just saw. 
earlier on the uh, latin and roast. delicious. Yes. Some meatballs. And of course the, the medium rare. Well, we call it the medium rare because well, as we pour on the broth, the, the, the it'll, broth it'll on the it, broth, it will cook it itself. And then uh, just uh, add the greens, you know, green onions, cilantro, and then uh, some white onions. Yes, that was really fun. Oh, well, I, can't, I can't wait to dig in. Yes. So, to, to, tell us the uh, the correct way to uh, to dig okay, in. Okay, so pot. kind of what I say to all my customers: test the broth first. I will say it's a very clear, clean broth. So that's how we try to do. Yeah. So the long process is make it you know, the broth clear, but we keep the, the mm. flavor as good we can. Now, you you guys are more than just two generations. In, in yes, the we go back to the third generation. So. The pho itself is the recipe of my grandfather, and uh, he he had multiple restaurants back in Vietnam uh, in the 60s and uh, 60s, 70s, until uh, Vietnam War in 75. So that's why they uh, they have to move to the United States and uh, and start building up in uh, New Orleans back in 1982. But then Katrina hit, and then uh, mm. we kind of like uh, start our life again back in And that's how you Houston. ended up in, in Houston? Yes. You find that Houstonians are pretty familiar with Vietnamese cuisine I think they, in general? Uh, I think Houstonians are very open to everything. The, the city is so diverse. You, you, you can find any background, any, any cities. And uh, everybody is willing to try all the food that we have here. So it's just a pleasure to see any, anybody to come over in the restaurant and try to put more food. The city's palette continues to change thanks to immigrants and refugees who come from all over the world and bring their culture with them. We even have our very own Little Nigeria in West Houston near I-69 and Bissonette. A staple in many Nigerian households is a goosey soup. You eat it with a sticky dough called fufu. I can't wait to try it. Hi, David, how are you? Great to meet you. Welcome. So I gotta tell you, being from Central America, mm -hmm. we use a lot of the same ingredients in Africa know, and Central America, but I've never seen a lot of these ingredients. What do we have in front of us? We have smoked fish, we have crayfish, we have beef, we have goat meat, we have stuck fish, which is very flavorful. Mm. We have bomo, which is cow skin, and then we have shaki, which is tripe. tripe. Yeah. And then we have our our Maggie, we have our salt, our habanero, our melon seed, and then we also have our palm oil. Usually when, we, when we're making our agusi paste, we'll actually boil this, we'll add some water, we add the agusi, then we add palm oil. It will take about 20 to 30 minutes to get this rich paste. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and soak our crayfish and our smoked fish, if you can help me bring it over okay. here. You're gonna go ahead and pour some water. And then also with this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit and soak for a little bit, and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna go ahead and get our smoked fish drained, and then we're gonna also remove some of the impurities from the crayfish. Okay. We're gonna use the smoked fish to add a lot of flavor. And a lot of Nigerians love when they see the smoked fish. So now we're gonna go ahead and chop our onions and our habanero. I don't like using regular water, so what I usually do, I just use the beef broth to add just a little bit of that flavor. Go ahead and blend it. After we're done blending, we're gonna go ahead and also blend the habanero. Okay. Just gonna throw it in there. Okay, so now we are ready to get our agusi soup on. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and get the agusi. Okay. Well, this is agusi with the palm oil. So this is the melon seed and the palm oil. There you go. Go ahead and pour some of the meat broth in. Just a little bit. And then if you can go ahead and get me some of the onions. Let it boil just for a little bit. What's the story behind a goosey soup? Is this something that's 
common in every Nigerian home, in every Nigerian kitchen? It's so crazy because when it comes to Nigeria, we have about 320 tribes. Everybody knows about a goosey soup. It's very popular. But then to spend time to make a goosey soup, it takes a lot of time. It's luxury. So go ahead and help me pour in some yeah, of the... Yeah, you want to do the crayfish? Yeah. And then go ahead and you can start giving me some of the uh, smoked fish. Okay. And I'm going to be adding in some of the Maggi just to kind of give it some flavor. And also go ahead and bring me some of the blended pepper. Go ahead and start adding the meat. Okay, this is our, our goat meat? Yes, this is our goat meat. Just throw it in there. Try it. Mm-hmm. And then the pomo. There you go. So go ahead and put the stuck fish. Now, what I want you to do now, I want you just to break, break it, it, break it yeah. in pieces. And then let's add some of the beef. Let's try a little bit of it. Oh, this is good. Yeah? Yeah. I'm coming in. Go ahead and try. How is it? It's so savory. Awesome. Okay, so yeah. we're there. We're there. In the meantime, we can start. There's the heat. You you taste it? There's the heat. <laughs> I love my I love my goosey soup. I love all my soups actually spicy. If yeah. it doesn't have spice and flavor, I'm not here mm. for it. So what we're gonna do now it. is just gonna let this cook a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and get ready for the fufu. So this I recognize. We call it we call it yuca in Central America. And we call it cassava, cassava. and we also call it gari. We're gonna actually make our gari fufu, which is right here. This is a dried fried gari. We're gonna be pouring this in hot boiling water. Our goal is to make it a little bit not bumpy. A pro, look at you. First time making fufu. Fufu? Yes, gari. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and move over. I want you to go ahead and just be adding the spinach while okay. I turn. And we're gonna go ahead and let this cook just for a little bit. We have our fufu, we have our goosey, so now it's time for us to eat. Let's eat. David, I want you to meet Safari, my mom. Safari. Let's foo foo. So just dip. Just wash your hands. Now this is the real art of okay. eating foo foo. And what we call foo foo back home is swallow. That's what we call foo foo. So why it's called swallow is because you're not supposed to chew it. You're supposed to swallow it. So you're gonna it's have gold. to pick a pick a small piece mm -hmm. and just roll it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scoop it in your soup. Yeah? Mm-hmm, try. Mm. That's good. That's good. really good. That's good. Awesome. You did very good work. Thank you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've gathered a few family recipes now and learned a little bit about the traditions that brought this deliciousness to Houston. But what happens over generations is that these food traditions mix with each other and the flavors of Texas. That's what makes our food scene unique. That's what Kui Hong and his partners do at Blood Brothers Barbecue. Their pop-ups in Midtown have a cult following. Hi, Q. Yes, sir. David. Nice to meet you. What do you got going on here today? Today I got a beef belly. We're gonna do some beef belly burn ends with a Korean gojujang barbecue sauce. I got this uh, Korean dry rub that we make. Has some brown sugar, salt, pepper, uh, sesame seeds, uh, goju garu, which is a Korean chili flake. So if you want, just dry, rub dry it down rub. real good. Yeah. You know, just cover both sides. Rub it in real good. And we're going to uh, a smoker. We're gonna throw this in the smoker at 275. In the smoker. That's a beautiful setup, man. That's it. So that'll go for six hours. Yeah, that'll go for six hours until it forms a really nice bark. This has already been in for six hours? Yes, sir. And you said you press it. What does that mean? Uh, so when it comes out the smoker, I put it in between you know, two sheet pans and then just weigh it down with whatever you have. Your uh, little sister put it on top. Yeah, weights, phone books, whatever. Uh, I normally do that overnight, let it cool down. And once it's cooled down, we cube it up. We're going to put more seasoning on top and then also a uh, our house-made 
barbecue sauce with gojujang. Using gojujang paste? Yes, the gojujang paste. And then just blended with, yeah, with some so, Asian pear? Yeah, pears, vinegar. Then that just, so that's gonna tenderize it even more, Oh huh? yeah, just sauce it up real good. And then this is gonna go back in the smoker for another couple hours. So Q, you're, you're Vietnamese? Vietnamese, yes. It's only, and gojujang is, is Korean. Are you guys drawing from cuisines? Houston, Houston foods, really. Uh, you can, you know, drive down to Long Point, get good Korean food. You can drive down to uh, A-Leaf, get good Vietnamese food. So we really try to showcase the diversity of Houston. True, true really. Houston barbecue. Yeah. All right, so just to recap, we went six hours whole seasoned, then pressed, cubed, Marinated, seasoned, and then we're going back in for, yes, for back another two hours. For Let's do hours. it. Oh my God. Such beautiful color. You got a nice bark on there. It's explosive, dude. Thank you. Amazing. So what's the best accompaniment for this? Uh, we do a Korean salad dressing, which is some leaf lettuce shredded up. To make, make it healthy, dressing. right? Yeah, yeah, that's our right. one healthy yeah, let's do, uh, let's thing, do it. you know? So. Yeah. I'm gonna grab that. So we have, here's some soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, sesame oil. Good sesame oil. Yes, sir. Wouldn't be Korean without sesame oil. Right. Sugar. About a cup. Yeah, Korean. What's this? Uh, the Korean red chili peppers, uh, gochugaru. Okay. Green onions. Yum. And garlic. Awesome, we'll just dress some salad and put the beef on yeah, top. for sure. Got some pickled red onions and jalapenos. Oof. Awesome, thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, it looks great. Dude, look at the bark on that. Yeah. Gotta have bark in Texas, mm. right? It's got some bite too. Food connects us. <laughs> it's often our first introduction to a new culture. And it's not just about eating. We experience food together. Put it all over? All over. Guys, thank you so much for coming today. I gotta tell you, this was an incredible week. We got to spend some time in some really cool kitchens and celebrate the diversity, the color, and the flavors of the city of Houston. Cheers to Houston. Cheers. Yeah. Our best memories happen around the table. It's the ultimate equalizer. Let's share our recipes. Let's talk about where our families are from. Let's bring something new to the table because food is an international language. It brings us together and it's what makes Houston strong.